Hello YouTubers and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my Can-Am 570 XMR that I have owned for almost 5 years. I'll be going over the price of the machine, the problems I've had with it, the things I liked about it, and the reasons why I sold it. So stay tuned! First, let's talk about price. Back in 2016 when I purchased my Outlander 570 XMR, it had a base sticker price of around $8,500. I was able to get a sizable discount as I purchased mine at the end of the 2016 model year. This is when dealers need to make room for the new incoming models and are more willing to discount them. So remember this buying hack when you purchase your next ATV. So what do you get for your $8,500? Well, the drivetrain includes Can-Am's 570 engine and is mated to a CVD transmission. The engine puts out 48 horsepower and the XMR comes standard with Can-Am's proprietary Visco lock system. What is Visco lock? Basically it's Can-Am's version of a diff lock. How it works is one of the front wheels has to slip before the differential lock will engage. The spinning axle engages a hydraulic pump in the differential which in turn engages the clutch pack and locks the differential. The slipping wheel must make several rotations before the differential will lock. It really is a cool setup. Other standard features include 10.5 inches of ground clearance, a heavy duty front bumper, 28 inch Mudzilla tires, small factory air snorkel, crappy oil shocks, more on that later, a top mounted radiator, and some decent storage capacity. At $8,500, I think it's somewhat expensive for what you get. In my opinion, don't pay sticker for one of these. Wait until the end of the model year to purchase one. This is when dealers are discounting them at least 10 to 15%, and you can use that extra money you save to buy some of the much needed accessories like a winch and shocks. Unfortunately, I did have a few problems with mine. The first problem I had was with it staying in low gear. For some reason, my 570 XMR would either keep popping out of low gear or not engaging at all. When it did pop out of low gear, it made this horrific grinding sound, which I'm positive wasn't good for it. I later found out the shift linkage wasn't adjusted correctly at the factory. I didn't want to hassle with bringing it into the dealer, so I fixed this problem myself. If you'd like to know more about this repair, click my playlist link in the description. I created a DIY video to help others who may have this same problem. What you just heard there was my second problem. As you heard, the engine is running rough and is missing. Basically, the engine was running on only one cylinder. I was kind of surprised by this, because my XMR only had 280 miles on it at this time. Once I had removed one of the old spark plugs, I noticed it was covered in fuel and wasn't firing. So the problem ended up being one of the spark plugs were fouled and needed replacing. I don't know exactly what caused the spark plug to foul prematurely, but it sure was an inconvenience to have to replace them so soon. I also made a DIY video on how to replace the spark plugs on a Can-Am 570 engine, in case other owners ran into this problem. You might be surprised just how easy it is to do. I know I was. Once I had put a fresh set of plugs in the engine, it ran great and I never had this problem again. So maybe I just received a bad plug from the factory. The third problem was with the DPS button on the handlebar. This button adjusts the settings to the electronic power steering. When I first bought the machine, I could press the DPS button with little to no effort and it would cycle through the settings with no problems. However, as the machine aged, this problem took more and more effort on my part to get it to cycle through the different settings. By the time I was ready to sell the machine, I had to use a ridiculous amount of effort to press in the DPS button, otherwise it wouldn't cycle through the different settings. I really didn't look into this problem because technically it still worked, but something definitely wasn't right. There are a few things I didn't like. Some are minor, some aren't, and some had me thinking, really Can-Am? The things I didn't like include the brakes, airbox cover lid, shocks, and the lack of a winch. First, let me talk about the brakes. I'm only going to say this once. The brake pads that came with my XMR were absolute garbage. I didn't even get 200 miles out of them before they were completely worn down and I was hitting the metal backing plate. I expected more from Can-Am on this. The next disappointment is the cover to the airbox. This machine came with a factory snorkel, but the airbox cover lid, which is located about 8 inches below that snorkel, isn't watertight. Really, Can-Am? I hear this is still a problem that Can-Am has yet to address. Even 2021 models still have this design flaw. I personally never had the stones to take my shiny new and very expensive quad swamping, but I know plenty of people who would. If you're one of these people, make sure you purchase one of the aftermarket solutions that will rectify this problem. Otherwise, you better keep a spare engine on the shelf. Another disappointment I had is in the shocks. I understand this is an entry-level muddy machine, but Can-Am wants almost 9000 bucks for this thing. 
and I think for that money, the shocks could have been a bit better. The suspension is very stiff and hardly absorbs any bumps. If I would have kept it, I would have purchased new shocks from Elka. From what I hear, they are a very worthwhile upgrade for these machines. As a beginner ATV rider, I had no idea how much a difference in tires can make when trail riding. I don't know if it was just ignorance on my part or what, but these Mudzilla tires do a terrible job on the trails. I really can't knock Can-Am for this because this beast was marketed as a mud machine. But keep in mind, if you're buying an XMR to also use for trail riding, then a second set of wheels and trail friendly tires is an absolute must. I think this is an expense that most people don't realize until they experience it for themselves. So just keep that additional expense in mind. Another thing I found odd was my XMR lacked a temperature gauge. I think this was a terrible idea on Can-Am's part. When you're out there mudding and running these things hard, it's very important to monitor engine temperature. I don't understand why Can-Am didn't include a temperature gauge, but they didn't. Here are some of the things I liked about my 570 XMR. Keep in mind though that this was my first quad, so I was really happy with the 570 engine. It provided good power and plenty of torque for a beginner rider like myself. Don't let the small engine size fool you, because this thing can move when it wants to. I also like the fact that the engine didn't give me any major problems other than one fouled spark plug, which was easy to remedy. I'm a big fan of snow and mud bogging. It's very addictive and a lot of fun, and the XMR performed flawlessly in this area. I hardly ever got stuck, and whenever the snow got really deep, the 570 engine had plenty of muscle to turn those 28 inch Mudzilla tires. I think the reason why the XMR does so well in this area is because of its Mudzilla tires. They do a phenomenal job in the deep stuff, but they do have their drawbacks when it comes to trail riding, so keep that in mind. Another thing I liked is the styling. Can-Am did an excellent job with the appearance of the XMR. Let's face it, the machine looks sick with those crazy mud tires, radiator relocation kit, and the addition of that big front bumper. A lot of my neighbors have Polaris or Suzuki four-wheelers, and when I brought my XMR home, a few of them expressed how cool it looked. So bonus points to Can-Am for going that extra mile. For the most part, I like the instrument cluster. Unlike other manufacturers in this segment, Can-Am decided not to use an analog instrument cluster from the 1980s. I think Can-Am did well here with their digital cluster, which for the most part has the information that enthusiasts are after except for one, a temperature gauge. Come on Can-Am, please include a temperature gauge next time around. I think for almost 9000 bucks, Can-Am should have included a winch on this machine. After all, this is the most important, oftentimes the most useful tool on a mudding machine. If you buy the base 570 XMR, then expect to spend another 300 of your hard earned dollars on a good winch. If you need to have the dealer install it, then kiss a few more hundos goodbye. When I purchased my winch, I also called a few dealers around me to get an estimate on installation, and all of them quoted me a little over 200 in labor to install it. I ended up installing the winch myself, and it really was pretty easy to do. Click on the playlist link in the description if you're curious what it takes to install a winch on an Outlander. Another must-have accessory is the second set of wheels and tires. My 2016 570 XMR came standard with Mudzilla tires, which are terrible for trail riding. If you like to trail ride as well as mud bog, then an extra set of trail tires is a must. I ended up purchasing a set of used Can-Am beadlock wheels that came mounted with Bighorn tires for around 500 bucks. These trail friendly wheels and tires improve my XMR's trail riding characteristics immensely. This isn't really a must have accessory, but I felt these handlebar wind deflectors up the coolness factor a few notches, so I bought them. Basically I purchased them because I thought they looked cool, but I later learned how valuable they are, especially if you follow behind people on gravel roads. These wind deflectors help keep rocks and mud from hitting your hands, and help make following people a bit more comfortable. Plus, they are reasonably priced and easy to install. Another upgrade I did was the addition of a set of Can-Am heated grips and thumb throttle. I went with a Can-Am branded kit because I wanted a factory look and also a plug and play installation. Installing the heated grips were quite easy to do and they kept my hands nice and toasty during those cold winter rides. If you do a lot of cold weather riding, then these are also a must have. At the time of this video, a set of Can-Am heated grips is less than $300 from your local dealer and will take a few hours to install. So why did I sell my ATV after putting all that time and effort into making it my own? Well, the reason is I saw an opportunity and I took advantage of it. Because of COVID-19, a lot of dealers don't have any new units in stock, which has driven the price of used ATVs through the roof. I really had no idea this was happening until I started browsing Facebook Marketplace and was absolutely shocked by the asking prices. So I decided to list mine to see what would happen. But then 24 hours it was sold and the new owner was picking it up at my full asking price.
So what will I get now? Well, I took the money from the sale of my 570 XMR and then placed an order for a brand new 2021 Outlander 850 XMR. Because of COVID, I probably won't take delivery of my new ATV until June, July of 2021. My dealer even gave me a nice discount to keep me happy while I wait. My new Outlander will have some features that I could never add to my 570, like more power. While I was satisfied with the power at first, it did always leave me wanting more as I became more of an experienced rider. I think the 850 engine will fill that void and should keep me happy power-wise for many years to come. The 850 does have much nicer shocks and also includes Can-Am's new Visco 4-lock system, which I hear is a huge improvement over the standard locker. Hopefully this video will help you decide if a 570 XMR is right for you. I really love mine. The only problem is it was a gateway drug into wanting more, hence the purchase of an 850. If there are any videos you would like me to do when I receive my new 850, please tell me about it by leaving a comment down below. So long.